Hi lovely artists, how are you today? I've continued to miss you guys um, in person, but so excited to get through this week. This week we were talking about an awesome artist named Roy Lichtenstein. He was born in, Octo in October 1923 and he died in September 1997. So for an artist, he was relatively old, um, especially someone who was working around the 80s the 70s, the 80s, that type of era. He was born and raised in America. He was born in New York City and moved around um, throughout his career. And he is our artist this week. So we're looking at the pop art movement at the moment. Roy Lichtenstein is most famous for his work with dots. So he would use dots of colour to create a pixelated look. Um, so what would traditionally be done on a printer? Um, and he would use the printer colors. So cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And he would use these four colors to create his artworks. And the name of, the, the name of these dots are the Ben Day dots. Um, you can find you can find them in majority of his later work um, they became synonymous with him and he really he really made them work for him um, and really became part of his style so Because of the way that um, Roy Lichtenstein um, did his work, he would often copy um, comic book strips and give them his own sort of spin. So because of that, a lot of people didn't think of him as an artist when he was living. They thought of him more as a copycat. Um, but we know today, like, artists, we all copy someone at some point it's all about learning those skills so if we want to paint like leonardo da vinci we might go and we will copy a leonardo da vinci uh, work or and then incorporate that into our own practice so a huge one that was going around the last few years is leonardo da vinci's mona lisa so people would paint the Mona Lisa and then they would change her in some way. So as long as you've got more than 10% of something changed, it's no longer a direct copy. So this is where um, Lichtenstein really kind of came into his own. So he would do comic strips, strips of Mickey and Minnie Mouse, but he might put his own words to it or he might just take part of that and then create create it to be more dramatic and speak to what he was wanting to say in his art. Um, and in this way, he would poke fun at mass-produced art like Andy Warhol um, or high-end art that you would find in galleries like the so-called masters of the Renaissance like Da Vinci um, Renoir, all these sort of people who we'll be looking at in later videos, don't worry. We're just starting with the nice, nice bright colours at the moment. Um, not only did Roy Lichtenstein create 2D works, so with the paint, printing, that type of thing, he also made some really cool and colourful sculptures that really, when you look at them, they're just bright, they're happy and they bring a smile to everybody's face. Um, uh, so I hope you learned a little bit about Roy Lichtenstein. Feel f like make sure you do your own research as well. Um, if he's somebody that really captures you, um, you can head over to websites like MoMA, um, the Modern Gallery in um, New York. 
and check out all of his work. Some of his early work is really, really astonishing and very different to what he's become famous for. But also check out his later works of his of his Bende dots and have a look at how he uses them because that's what we're going to look at today. So we're going to use the four colors. So magenta, cyan, yellow and black. We're going to create these colors using our paints and we're going to be using our bubble wrap as our stencil. So we're going to use this as our Bende dot. Um, you can do it any way you like, but we're going to be layering colors with this to create other colors so that our eyes get tricked. So if we want to do a purplish color, we're going to lay down red and blue and trick our eyes as we move back from our artwork into thinking that it's a purple color. So now with no further ado, let's get painting. Okay, let's get started. So this week we're going to be working on The Sinking Sun by Roy Lichtenstein. Um, as you can probably see, if I just bring this nice and close, we've got a few different colours happening here. So we've got blue bende dots, we've got red bende dots, we've got some nice strong colour um, for some um, clouds or some sun rays we've got the strong color strong yellow for the sun and then in these other clouds i don't know if you can see it on the camera but there's blue dots and there's red dots creating this purple color so when you bring it out it creates a purple sun sunset that you see in the sky at the end of each day. So this is what we're working on. Thank you if you have bought our um, pack for this week. Uh, you would have got our artist in focus along with um, our picture of what we're doing and an area to practice your Bende dots. So on this piece, what I want you to do is I want you to find your pencils. Um, I want you to find some crayons, some paint, cotton buds, you name it, anything circular. And I want you to practice creating different size dots. But all the dots in each square, I want you to do them the same size. And they need to be evenly spaced apart. So... Just to get you going, I'm going to use the end of my er, my pencil. As you can see, it's got an eraser tip and it's nice and flat. So we're just going to dip it lightly and then we're going to fill our square with nice, even yellow dots. So this is super fun if you are feeling a bit bored 
bored, you don't know what to do. And we're just going to over, we're just going to make them so that they go in the spaces. So you'll have kind of a diagonal pattern going on if you look at the lines. And then what I want you to do is I want you to start mixing colours. So, because this is going to be really helpful when we come to painting our, our painting. So I'm just going to put some more yellow down and then I'm going to move and start to make this an orange colour. And the way we're going to do that is I've got some red here. So it's going to be my makeshift magenta. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover up half of one of these dots. So you should have a double dot. And then we're going to evenly go over like that until we get to the end of the page. And then once you've done there, so you've got half yellow, half orange, we're going to go up and do the next couple of lines. Alright, so down the bottom here, you can see we've got the purple happening at the top. We're going to do that down the bottom. So if you can see through your bubble wrap, we just want to put our blue dots slightly off centre to what we did the red. And you should see that nice purple starting to appear again. So this is what our printer does when we're printing out our pictures. It's only got four colour inks and in tiny, tiny little dots, it creates it creates all the colours of the rainbow, which is super cool. Alright, so running out of blue, mix it up a bit more. off this corner and just go over anywhere you think you need a touch up oh, I might add a few more just down here there we go now that's our bend a dots done now we get to come in and what we're going to do is we're going to draw back in our whites and our yellows oh, and there's a, some red or magenta and we'll come and do our blacks. So popping, the, popping that aside, we'll wash that up later. And I'm going to get a, pro and a brush that's approximately 
a size four. So can you see that on the brush? Every brush has a number. So this one is about the width of my fingernail and it's a size four. This one, a one inch brush, is called a one inch. But you can also go all the way down and you can get, I don't know if this one's gonna show up because it's so shiny. This one is a five zero brush. So here's a better one. This is a 16 zero brush. So can you see how tiny that one is? It's super tiny. So we're going to be using our size four. And to start with, I'm gonna start with our white because our yellow is quite thin and because it's a tran it can be quite transparent so i'm going to in fact i've thought of a better idea we're going to teach you a new trick so with a wet brush what you can do is you can actually erase dry uh, not dry wet paint so we add some water into the area we get our paper towel or our sponge and we dab it we dab that area and that will get rid of the pigment of the color that we don't want so usually this only works in areas that have just recently been painted So I'm going to try do my my sun sun rays. And can you see that? See how the um the paint's lifting as the water touches it. This is a really cool trick when you've just got too much paint down and you want to be able to erase a mistake or you've put paint somewhere and you decide you no longer want it there and you put it down only a few minutes into the piece. So I'm going to do this all the way across. This will also make it easier to come back with our white paint because there won't be so much colour on the canvas and those areas should be nice and dry for when we do want to put down for when we want to put down that white. This one a bit wider, I think. Alrighty, and then I'm going to come and see if I can do that where my yellow pigment's going to go for the mountains. This way. You 
you should be able to start seeing a design is coming back onto the canvas. This is why I like paper. I prefer, I like the, the toilet paper because it's so absorbent. It picks up everything. It's easy to use. Uh, we're going to do this thick line through here. That goes underneath the clouds. I'm just going to outline some of these clouds as well just to give me a rough idea of where I'm going because I don't know if you can tell if you have a look at your picture the clouds have a white a white gap at the top of them don't worry if you don't quite follow your your original um, pencil marks. Those pencil marks are to help get the image into your brain as well as onto the canvas. So they're just our drafting lines. I want a nice big cloud behind there. Bit of a cloud there. And I think that'll do for me for now. So I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to come back and do my first coat of white paint in those areas. So what we've done with what, what we've done with the water is we've essentially re rehydrated that paint that we put down. But we've rehydrated it so much that it no longer sticks to the canvas. And that's why we can come back and pick it up with our paper towel or our rag. So sorry boys, at this stage I know it is very pink and purple, but trust me, it will get better. I know some of my boys don't like doing super pink paintings. Next I'm going to bring in my yellow, going over my heels, creating my sun. reflection under the clouds and 
And then that's all our colours done. So this is a super easy one this week. Next I'm going to grab a little round brush, some black paint. And we're going to go around the outlines. So we'll do the sun. We'll do the top line of the mountains on one side. So whichever side you've got your mountain overlapping, coming right down to the edge of the canvas, do that side first. And then we're going to do the other side. So this one's a great one to do if you have little brothers and sisters because you can use your fingers to make all these dots as well. You can make it as messy or as clean as you like, but it's such a simple design, you can teach your brothers and sisters. And we're gonna go across the top. You'll notice I keep wiping my brush and getting new black. That's because I don't want too much color in my black line. And because it's black, I can actually mix it in. I can mix it back in. So usually if I'm working in the studio, I would do this on an easel, um, just cause it's a bit easier on the wrist. But so that you guys can see what I'm doing, just having it flat on the table. I'm just going to leave that middle line in here to dry a bit. I'm going to spin her around and I'm going to work on the clouds and on the sky because it's still quite wet down that end. So what, uh, seeing I've spun it around, I'm going to do underneath the clouds, just in those little bubble curves just to outline and this is where you'll really see your painting come into its own so you laid all the foundation work and now you're bringing back the detail And what you should have at the end of it is a lovely comic book style sunset. In a similar style. To Roy Lichtenstein. So I'm just going to finish off this middle line. Make sure you leave yours to dry for as long as possible in between where you need to. So if, if your colours are mixing in with your black, leave it for it to dry for a bit longer. But for the sake of the video, what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish this one off. So yours might take longer than mine. It might be quicker than mine. There we go. 
there we have it. Our Roy Lichtenstein inspired sunset. So go have a try yourselves.